Hello brothers and sisters, Michael Humble, Seeker of Truth. For Rapture and Apocalypse, what new oil, part five. How many parts are there gonna be? Uh, I don't know, as many as Father uh, keeps laying out there. So, when we run out of new oil, we'll move on to a different series, but today is not that day. <laughs> Father's uh, showing some amazingly cool stuff, building on everything we've looked at. Um, just a very quick uh, mini review. We we saw how when it comes down to the 99 sheep and lost sheep, the, the 100 sheep, at the end, that uh, he uses these things to declare his plan, the menorah, phi, the Ark of the Covenant, among other things. But these are the three that just stand out so emphatically. And they all speak the same thing. And, uh, oh my goodness, there's so much uh, there. So, we closed-ish last time. When we saw this confirmation, so first of all, September 23rd, 2015, beginning last week of Daniel, 2,625 days, divided on five gives us 1,622 days. So September 23rd plus 1,622 days is 3 to 20, when Israel is 71. Then we saw... When we take the Sea of Galilee, 53 kilometers, I'm sorry. When we take the unity of the Father and the Son written in Hebrew, it's 53, represents the Father and the offspring, the heirs, the head and body of Christ. And we divide that by five, 53 being the whole family, full circle complete. Divide by five, it's 321 it's 3-2 when Israel is 71, which is 3-2-20. When we round it, it's 3-2-7-2 Israel's age when our Lord comes back, I believe. And so we saw that. I had said, uh, and we've covered a bunch in the past, how God has stamped out that 3-2-20. So he didn't just do that. He stamped it and stamped it and stamped it and stamped it so that we get it. <laughs> so we're going to look at a few of those stamps in review, but the review, the, the series is What New Oil? This is a huge part of, the, of that new oil. New understanding. New wisdom. Super windy today. I don't know if you can hear that, but... So what are the ways, briefly, that God has done that? Uh, confirmed 3 to 20 being the day marked out on Phi, the ultimate sign of his coming, of his son's coming. Well, why don't we start with the birth and death of Moses? Okay, because it wasn't just that Moses died on the 7th of Adar and was born on the 7th of Adar, which... This year in three in in 2020 began the evening of March 2nd, 3 to 20. Moses' birth and death. Well, how is that a confirmation that it's a signpost of this, you know, the sign of his son's coming? Well, when did Moses die? He died right before they went over the Jordan River, God parted the Jordan River for him, and they passed through into the promised land. And Moses died shortly right before that, so he was at the river. He just didn't cross it. And understanding that, and that 3220 is that signpost of the Lord's return. We don't know the day and hour. We just know for a certainty uh, that he's coming back anytime and this is partly how this humongous signpost among many other signposts so 
So that would be one. Genesis 1.10, God divides the water and the land. And he, he gathers the waters and he calls them seas. So, see, it's about division. Well, it's about many things, but this phi is about a two-part gathering. It's about the father and his family, the golden relationship. And it's about division in the middle of the hundred sheep of darkness and light. Um, and on and on. So understanding that that's division, when we see one of the first divisions in the Word of God take place, land and seas, oh, he calls the water, he, he could have made that any alphabetical word in the Word of God, he made it the 3,220th alphabetical word in the Word of God, 3,220, oh, and, and then he made the water 71% of the earth. See, Father ties things down and stamps them and signposts them in ways only he could do. It's part of him declaring himself God. It's part of his declaring the end from the beginning and throne ancient times. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. How about history? Tying history in to mark this out. Again, about that division. So, historically, the kingdom of Israel was divided in 932 B.C. Solomon died that year, and uh, the kingdom, the ten northern tribes, uh, divided from the southern tribes. And uh, so, first thing worthy of note is kingdom divides 932 okay, B.C. We're going to look at that number in a minute. Rehoboam was the king of Judah when that kingdom divided in 932 B.C. Do you know that Rehoboam is the 7,346th alphabetical word that God uses in his word? Strong's number 7346. Oh, and it's used 50 times. Times. 50 used... The word 50 used 300, the word 50 used 162, five times in the word of God, okay? And Rehoboam is used 50 times. Well, God set a parameter in Psalm 90 where he tells us to learn the number of the days. Psalm 90 verse 4, when a thousand years becomes yesterday and is a watch in the night. Well, that happened when 1999 became 2000. The watch in the night is a day called to be Shabbat, which literally means watch. God started a 19-year metonic cycle on that day. Super blood moon, January 21st, 2000, on to be Shabbat. That cycle ended January 21st, 2019, on to be Shabbat. Watch to watch, bringing us from when a thousand years became yesterday up to the year where they kept the Passover in defiance and denial of the accomplished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. I butchered how I said that in the last video. I uh, said they crucified the Lord of glory. Of course, that was a couple thousand years ago. They kept the Passover in 2019, an abomination to God. And that 19-year metonic cycle marked out it ended right before they kept that Passover. God marked that key fourth year decision out. And of course he did. Well, what else did he mark with it? January 21st, 2000. When a thousand years becomes yesterday and is a watch in the night to be shvat. January 21st, 2000. Plus 7,346 Rehoboam days. Okay. Oh, it... <laughs> it brings us to 3, 2, 20. Now remember, it's a, partly about division. And so not only does it bring us 3 to 20, but it was divided in 932 B.C. What if we look at Strong's number 932? You know, Solomon died in 932. 
And uh, big part of that was his rampant idolatry. So we think of Solomon, wisest man, and you know this and that. Well, anybody that studied into it a little bit knows that that's not how the story ended. He had 800 wives and some hundreds of concubines and uh, God warned him about it. He didn't listen. He started worshiping and uh, worshiping the other gods, his, his foreign wives' gods. And he died in that state of idolatry in 932. Well, how does that picture the division that's coming? Because judgment's coming and people are going to die for their rampant idolatry. I didn't write it. So what's Strong's number 932 then, seeing how Father ties this stuff together through history, through creation, through the Word, through prophecy? Strong's number 932 is kingdom. Mm. Fitting, seeing as that's when the kingdom was divided before. So it's the word kingdom in the New Testament, and it's used 162. Five times but it's not just kingdom it's kingdom of and then it's a bunch of different things so the total is 162 but look at the story this tells most of you have probably seen this a dozen times but somebody out there hasn't <laughs> so here we go kingdom of kingdom of god 71 times kingdom of heaven 32 times kingdom of general or evil 20 times it's 3 2 20 when israel is 71 that's the when okay so a couple thousand years ago um sorry when the new testament was written and god had it uh, put in there like this he pinned 3220 when Israel is 71 is when. Now we know that's the signpost for the soon return. Pinning that day as he has so many other ways. It's thy, my, or his 646. And that's the what. It ties to the 646 from the menorah, from the ark, from the cross. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you might want to go back to part one. Other is 23 times because it's all wrapped up in 2023, New Jerusalem with men. Interestingly, that other, that 23 times, is miscellaneous 18 and it's the kingdom five times. What does that emphasize? Five is grace, but it's Abba. And we looked at that four-part model. Father, 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 Father. All in the grace of Almighty God and His Son, Jesus Christ. That's why it's five. Okay, so the kingdom, five times. Referring to that very thing. The whole family being home. Why miscellaneous 18? Because it represents both things that are coming. Three vavs are gatherings of believers. Uh, mark the number of the beast, 666. Let him that hath wisdom count the number of the beast, 6 plus 6 plus 6. And so we have God marking out his whole plan in a single word, in a single alphabetical position, giving it a number. Tied to history, tied to both ways he pins this day, 3 to 20, when Israel is 71, marked on phi, two different methods. How far do we have to go? How much do we have to see before we finally, and I know many of you get it, 
But so many don't. Ah, that's on Father. Even the first time he uses this kingdom in the New Testament, it's in Matthew 3, 2, 3, 2, 20. I, <laughs> it's absolutely off the chart incredible. I get a little excited about it. <laughs> Kingdom in the Old Testament we've never really looked at. And I'm just going to hit it briefly. Uh, let's see. Here. First use is Genesis 10.10. 10. You remember that 10 is court and session, verdict be rendered? And that the thousand is 10 times 10 times 10. It represents those three points in time where verdict is to be rendered. Believers found innocent in the blood or believing of the lamb. Okay. And... It's that division. It's the division of those two points, 99 sheep and lost sheep. The colon is the river. It is the river. And what's the two tens together? It's 20. In 2020, that river, I... I still really believe he's marked out 2020 like a hundred ways. If we're still here come January, then we'll figure that out then. But we don't just scrap. The thing with this stuff, it's irrefutable. How do you argue off of this? There's, I really, I, I don't know where somebody would go trying to do that. I, it's so amazing. It's so father. Um, you know, in the Old Testament, that word kingdom, 44, 67, it's used 117 times. And I find that interesting, just like the 10, 10, emphasizing that river and phi, 10 on each side. Okay, 117 chapter or Psalm 117 is the middle chapter in the Bible. Seven, 117, 1 and 2. Middle chapter of the Bible. How does God mark that out? Does it matter? Well, he made it the shortest chapter in the Word of God, which suggests that it's important to him because when he, he emphasizes through that kind of stuff. Notice it's verse 1 and verse 2 that makes the middle because there's an even number of verses in the Word of God, so you can't have a single middle verse. Vav 1, Vav 2. At the river. The Psalm 117 is at the river. It's exactly in the middle of the Word of God. And so, even here, he paints a picture. It's translated into the word kingdom specifically 110 times. There's a lot of implications to that. Simple one, Genesis 1.10 is where he divides the land and water and the water he calls seas, 32.20. One year and 10 days is the length of the flood. Um, there's just other stuff there. I don't want to get too far into that. Um, I did have a note here, though, I want to point out. So, Genesis, the first use then of kingdom... Genesis 10.10, 10. and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. And the beginning, oh, it starts with 72. Imagine that. Remember Zerubbabel, who's going to finish that last wall of the temple? Zerub, Babel. Zerub, simple English commentary, is 72, because that's when Babel's coming. And the beginning, 72 of his kingdom, when Israel's 72, was Babel, 89, 4. 89 brings us to the river, 4 is Jesus Christ, 
262 times. But notice uh, this 89. So Babel coming 72. And then we have the 89 because it's at the river. Zerub Babel, an example. Here's a little uh, world news. So we, the United States, uh, took out uh, terrorist Suleimani. And that was January 3rd, 2000. And then recently, Israel just took out um, the head of the nuclear program in Iran, um, Fakhrizadeh. Fuck was a day. <laughs> um, that's pretty close, actually, to how you say it. So that was uh, eleven twenty-seven. Seemingly completely unrelated events. Um, at least per this stuff, and maybe is I don't know. Well, it's interesting that that happens to be 329 days apart, which is exactly 89.89% .89 of the year. 80, <laughs> that pins the river a couple ways. We're coming to the river. Any second. It's where the Lord returns for the 99 sheep. It's when great tribulation begins. It is not when the beast gets here because it's already here. What else? Is there anything else that that pins that uh, the way he uses kingdom? Well, this one isn't exactly that, but uh, it kind of is. <laughs> All right, so Genesis, um, the word mountain in the word of God, okay, is number 20, 22. 99 sheep in 2020, lost sheep end of 2022. Let's take a look at that. First use is Genesis 12, 8. We're going to read a few verses here. So um, a bunch of you hopefully just went, oh, Genesis 12, 8. That's right after Genesis 12, 1 through 4, where God changes Abram's name. It's the first thing he says to him. Now the Lord, verse 1, had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. You know, I love that. So he's not just going to bless him. He's going to make him a blessing. And it's in that that we're most blessed. It's a beautiful cycle. And I will bless him that bless thee and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Verse 4, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. Yep, first thing God says to the patriarch, the father of all who believe, paints a picture of Israel's age at the end. When all the family is home, New Jerusalem with men. Let's keep going, though. Five, and Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and in the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land under the place of Sychem, under the plain of Morah, and the Canaanite was then in the land. Verse 7, And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there he built an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. Verse 8, 
And he removed from hence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent having Bethel on the west and high on the east, and there he builded an altar unto the Lord, and he called upon the name of the Lord. Okay, so easy account to understand here, uh, and easy figure to understand. It's interesting, so he's get up and get out of the land of, of your father's. Where does he go? He goes to the mountain. 20, 22. Oh, and uh, he removed and went to the mountain, got up and left. Uh, he removed. Is number 6275. It's 6275 because after the second Vav, 62, when Israel is 75, same picture as Abram being 75, New Jerusalem with men, and that mountain will be full of a hundred sheep. And I bet some lambs will join us. 261 times it's translated into mountain. 2022, where Abram is sent, is a picture of going into the promised land of the true promised land, is 2022. 261 times tying us back to 260 chapters in the New Testament. 260 miles equals 162 phi kilometers. The next chapter, 261, is the ultimate new beginning. And so we see family complete through this, okay? And through that 261, so God flips it. Exactly how that's pictured, I'm not sure, but I know it pictures this. Full circle, yes, that is quite a good circle, isn't it? <laughs> Just kidding. Um it's the beginning becomes the end becomes the new beginning. He pitched his tent on the west. Oh, that happens to be number three, two, twenty. How about that? Let's look at a few other places. Let's look at a few other places that uh, that mountain. It's the mountain of God is what it is. Sorry. I hope I'm not giving you guys a headache. Moving my phone around. Okay. Joshua 2. Why might that be? Hope you said it for me. Oh, so here we have the faith of the spies. In case you don't know where we're at and things here. So, Moses had just died, other side of the Jordan. And uh, they mourn his death, I think 33 days total, if I remember right, but more it's not the highlight of this conversation and so they're camped out at the at the edge of the Jordan River and they send three spies over to uh, check things out and so this uh, picks up about the spies and it's in verse 22 and they went and came unto the mountain and abode there three days Until the pursuers were returned, and the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. So they hid for three days and were kept safe for three days. That three days, God pictures over and over and over and over in the Word. 
as being the time of Jacob's trouble. Now we know that full time is 42 months, but not for the lost sheep. Because the 42 months includes the double portion of the bold judgments, which the lost sheep do not go through. But the three years he uses that, um, three days of darkness is, is a real clear picture of that. And I did a video, is there three days of darkness? And it looks at all the figures in the word, or many of them, that pin this three days as being pictured of the three years of Jacob's trouble. It'll be in the third year, Hosea 6, 2. He's smitten us. In after two days, after two years, he'll bind us up. In the third, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. But he still, he uses that three to figure that. And so we see that here, and they went and came there to the mountain, 20, 22, in verse 22, after being hid for three days. Sorry to yell at you. I'm not yelling at you. <laughs> I just get excited. Do you see it? So the two men returned and descended from the mountain, passed over, came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all things that befell them. Verse 23. So the two men returned after the three days slash three years of hiding in verse 22. 23. My father has gathered. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to his son, Jesus the Christ. Let's try uh, Joshua 14, 12. Twenty twenty two in Strong's. Well, mountain is number 2022. Uh, Strong's 22, I think. Man, I'm going to shut up. I better check. <laughs> Excuse me. Joshua 14, verse 12. Now, therefore, give me this mountain, where, whereof the Lord spoke in that day. For thou heardst in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall drive, I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Verse 14, Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb the son of Jephunneh the, the Kenizzite unto this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. You know, I wasn't actually going to include that, but same thing. So, Mountain 2022, it's 1414, where it says, Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb. 14 is seven seals, seven trumpets. See, after that last trumpet, Israel on this planet is going to rise up and fight against Baal. After the lost sheep go home, whether God sends back or I, I don't fully see that yet. I just see that it's there. Seven seals, seven trumpets. Seven seals, seven trumpets. I love Caleb. Don't you? You got to love that guy. So they originally were going to go into the promised land and Caleb and Joshua came back. Yeah, let's do this thing. God's with us. The other 10 are like, forget that. We're like grasshoppers unto him. You're crazy. Right? We all know that story. Well, Caleb, so they wait 40 years and then they finally get to go. Caleb finally gets to go in and watch the one true God declare himself as such in that promised land. And he says he picks them out with all the giants on it, the big boys. 
I want that mountain. Give me that mountain, he says. And God did. Thank you, Father, for who you are. For who your son is. For what you've done and what you've made us to be in him. And for the hope and promise of his return. We pray that you continue to open our eyes of understanding as we seek your truth, your wisdom, your light in the life that's in our Lord Jesus Christ. Fill us with your love, your grace, and your mercy that we may shed it and shine it forth, Father. That others may see you and your Son in us. Hear you in our words. Feel you in our actions as we wait for our Lord's return. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this. Amen. So, where else? Let's look at Isaiah 57, 13. Just a couple more places. It might be overkill for just some simple thing as word mountain. That's number 20, 22. But I'm trying to show how relevant it actually is. Very, re very relevant. 57, 13. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee, but the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall take them, but he that puts his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. 20, 22. Isaiah 66, verse 20. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering, offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem. Seth the Lord and the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. We are the offering. Verse 20. Bring an offering in a clean vessel into the Lord. We get white robes. We get new bodies. Clean vessels. Verse 21, and I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. Verse 22, for as the new heavens and new earth, which I will make. See, he hasn't made them yet in 2022. Do you understand the genius of him of Psalm 90, verse 4? And verse 10? To where he sets those parameters that he can then pattern in the word. Wow, so where 20 can actually be 20, 20 can be 2020, and very often is. It's not every verse 20. Verse 22, for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass, verse 23, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me. Now, if there's a pattern here, and I've shown it 5,000 ways by now, but if there is, and 23 literally speaks towards 2023. If, if somebody's out there pondering the timeline, well, but does it go past 2023? And I do the same thing. Could, could I see it wrong? Well, I mean, could it be this? Could it be that? No, no, presently no. Until I have to consider it. It just, it's way, 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 way too many things that tie together that only an almighty God could tie together and he ain't trying to trick us. 
all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Verse 23, Strong's number 23, my father has gathered. That means all flesh in 2023, which means lost sheep are home. 2022. Mountain. To God's mountain. His holy mountain. 2022. That just got added. This morning. Um, okay. A little bit about the Ark of the Covenant. So we've talked about how those different things... I just want to highlight a few things about uh, the Ark and about the menorah <clears throat> as we continue to do. Again, um, I'm going to end this with a ginormous diamond that Father handed me yesterday along with the other couple gigantic diamonds he gave me yesterday, gave us. But before we do, I want to look at a couple things <laughs> All right, so the Ark of the Covenant, Exodus 25. Let's let's go there. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, starting in verse 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so you shall make it. Make it exactly how I show you and tell you. Why? Because it's all a communication. Every single bit of it. Where he puts it, the dimensions of it. So that verse 8, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Look at this. So check this out. Sanctuary uh, is number 4720. It's for Jesus Christ, Israel 72, and 47. Harvest is used 47 times. So we got Jesus Christ. We got seven for seven seals, 47 for harvest. We got 72, and we got 20. Israel is 72 in 2020 when the Lord Jesus Christ number four comes back on its use 74 times because that's when the lost sheep go home in 2022 in Israel 74. What are we talking about? Him building the true temple. Us. It's amazing. Now check this out. This blows me away. So it's used, uh, oh, this word among. Then I may dwell among. God among us. It's 84, 32. There's our 3, 2. 84 is pinion. Uh, wing. We're getting new bodies. 452, 415 times total. Well, check this out. Midst is number one. That he may dwell in the midst of us. 209 times. Among 140 times. Within is 20 times. And middle is 7 times. So we know the middle is going to be the river, right? So let's add. Let's add these numbers. So we got 209, 140. We're going to leave the 20 sit because it represents 2020. So 209, 140, and 7 gives us not 349 it gives us uh 356 day 356 in 2020 is december 21st 2020 when saturn and jupiter convened winter solstice northern hemisphere and 1221 from the menorah when you take the center out it happens to pin that day. I said, if we don't go home that day, it's a humongous signpost 
for God to be among us in his true sanctuary any minute. So, yup, just how he uses those numbers um, for among or middle or midst. Pins the 21st. I don't know. I think it's wild. Uh, according to all that I will show thee. Oh, that's number 7,200. That's 72. 20. Full circle. Or two full circles when Israel is 72 because that's where the river is. The two full circles are, they meet at the river. What? In case you don't understand what I mean by that, so Phi showing the two parts of his coming, division in the middle, that is really this. Each side is a full circle. Each arc represents a full circle for those believers. The beginning becomes the end and their next beginning. Okay? So it's number 7,200. According to all that I will show thee. After the pattern. Oh, 20 times. No message there. Oh, and uh, I don't know if you caught it, but we just read verse 8 and 9. He just brought us to the river with that information. Okay. <laughs> Do you understand? Uh, he brought us to where we need an ark. We're talking about the Ark of the Covenant. Same picture as the ark, Noah's ark, and as phi. Verse 10, and they shall make an ark. Number 72, 7, 727. Either way, we go toward the middle. It's 72 from either end to the middle. It's translated ark 195 times, and Strong's 195 is exactness. What exactness? Well, let's see. Make it of wood, of shittim wood. Of wood is number 6086. Six, 32, 8 total times. 328 total times. Well, that wood is translated into tree 162, five times. It's the same as the tree of life because it's showing the same thing as the tree of life. The menorah depicts the tree of life. The Ark of the Covenant depicts the tree of life. Well, how is that really? It's easy to say it, but, you know, let's see it. And we're going to look at it briefly in a second, but I want to just hit a couple points, and I'm not even sure which ones. I want to show you similarities between the description of the Ark of the Covenant and the menorah so you can better see that it is the same message. Okay, so Exodus 25, 11, And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold within and without, thou shalt overlay it, and shall make upon it a crown of gold round about. Okay. Um, now over there. Okay, so thou shalt overlay it with pure gold is twenty eight, eighty nine. There's our eighty nine again. Oh, and seventy four times brings us to the river lost sheep when Israel seventy four. That word, it with pure, is clean, number one, use. Clean 50 times, number two, use pure 40 times. Clean and pure is 50, 40. Take the menorah, one times, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven, is 50, 40. Same message. Gold, 20, 2020. 91, 389 is the river. The gold within 
Oh, look at this. It's number 1004. And it's used 20, 55 times because the 55, the small piece, begins in 2004.